Right, today we're going to be looking at changing the impeller in the 10 horse Honda. Now, I'm not going to cover plugs and things. As you see, I've got all new plugs and that to go in as well. What I do is I do the plugs, the oil filter, the oil change and all that every year. New grease, that sort of thing. I do that every year. And the impeller I do every two years. Now, if you want to do it every year, go ahead. They recommend you do it every year, of course. Um, you know, it sells impellers to start with. But, I mean, I've always find, found that two years is fine. If you don't use your engine an awful lot, it's, it's normally fine for two years. But like I say, that's entirely up to you. Um, but what I would say is always check, obviously, that the water is pumping out your engine. And that's something I do regularly I, each time I start it. I, you know, it's just, a, it's just a habit now. I just tilt my head, see the water coming out. And I know, and I do know that the water has dropped a little bit. The pressure is not as good as it was. But whether that's the impeller, we'll find out. But more than likely, it's salt crystals which build up in the chambers around the impeller and it slows the water down. And whether you get the salt or you need a new impeller, you know, just change it. If you're going to take this leg off, do what you've got to do. Do everything before you put it back on. Right, let's get going. Right, let's take a look at what we need to do. Now, if you're wondering what all this black is, that's just anti-foul. My engine tends to dip in the water, so I anti-foul it to stop the weed growing on it. So you've got four bolts. You've got one there, you've got one there, you've got two on the other side in the same place, and you have got one, let's see if I can get a position on it, under here, right there. So you've got five you need to undo, undo. Now, importantly, when you get a spanner, make sure your spanner fits properly. Now, this is a 10 mil bolt, but the thing is, when you put it on, you'll see with this one, it looks all good and like new, but when you put it on there, You'll see, I don't know if you can see that, how much play I've got on that bolt. That is no good. There's a few, literally a mill or two play on that. So, you get that, chuck that one away. Now this one I do know fits. This is a ratchet one, and this goes on, and although it'll move a bit because it's got a ratchet, that actually is a good fit. Helps I got it the right way. There we go. Now you can just loosen these off. Now, before you undo those and take the leg off, there's one more thing you need to do. And that is on the front of the engine here, on the front of the engine here, there is a nut and it's in there. There's two nuts in fact. And what you need to do is you need to put a spanner on the top and bottom and you need to undo that. You basically put two spanners on, undo the top one, when it's loose just use your thumb and unscrew it that is the lever for the gear or the gear rod or whatever you call it and you won't be able to take the leg off until you've undone that Now, I'm going to encourage the bottom to come off for release now. Normally you use a rubber mallet, this is actually just rubber that's bound around a stick for a, well, it's for the boat, but it'll do the trick. Nice and gently, don't get carried away, it's coming. There we go. Right, just gotta finish doing this. There we go. That knot was a little bit stiff, the top one. Right, right, let me just tip this up so we can get the leg out. And there we go. Nice and easy, no problem with the um, with the spline. Sometimes these can get stuck in, but this one's obviously, or the engine's not that old. There's quite a lot of corrosion actually on this. That's a lot of corrosion. 
I'll show you. I've never had one with so much corrosion on it. Look at that lot. Down here, all this white, that's all corrosion. Interesting. Right, so as you can see, we've got it clamped to a bench. You'll have to excuse all the crap that's all over the bench at the moment. A lot going on. So, now we're going to undo these four bolts. So that'll just come off. Make sure you put that the right way back on after. So yeah, we're just going to undo these four nuts. And we can use... Just gonna undo these. So always be aware that your clamp could come loose on your engine. Or well, the clamp that I'm using, the uh, I can't remember what they call them now. Really need a better bench. Now, to be honest, what I could do make life much quicker if it fit. That is. Right, so. Just take these out. Whenever you take bolts out your engine, always check that they're the same length. But you'll see there how one is all corroded and one isn't. You see that? The best thing after is to put a little bit of, like this one, this one has actually got it, a little bit of um, waterproof grease on them. They won't come undone, but it'll stop that from getting corroded and it'll stop them getting jammed in there as well. But like I say, always check your, your nuts are the same size. If not, keep them in order. Right, now this has got to come off carefully. I say carefully because under here you'll have your impeller, but you've got a little pin and you don't want to lose that pin. Now. is just down there. Take that off. Right. Yeah, the pin is just here. It's what holds your impeller in place. You have to put it in our back in after. So don't lose that whatever you do or you'll be in a right mess. And then you've got the gasket. Again, you can replace all these gaskets. I've got um I always keep spare gaskets and things you see where there's one in this bag here. So I've got all the spares that I need. But if you buy a service kit, it'll give you all that and gaskets and whatever else is here. There's a lot of water in here. It's only fresh water though. There we go. What can help sometimes is a stand your blade if you're careful. There we go. Right. Now, as you can see, it's not actually bad at all. I was expecting a lot more salt than that. Let me see if I can get you closer to have a look. It looks like more corrosion than another thing. But you'll see in there in the chamber here this is where all the water comes in and all the salt builds up but there's not actually as much salt in fact compared to the four horse yamaha the four horse yamaha has a habit of getting salt stuck in here but this seems like a much bigger chamber and it seems to keep it clear on the honda which is good to know so the impeller was probably the thing which wasn't working that well anyway what you want for that what you want for that is some water, hot water is normally good, and a toothbrush. You just get in there, 
give it scrub it all out get it all nice and clean ready to have the new impeller and that put back on let's just grease around the arm that's good everything's in good condition there now let's take a look at the impeller there's the impeller in there you can see it's all squished they always end up looking like that we're going to find out this is two years it's done quite a bit of work we're going to find out what sort of condition the impeller is in after two years doing a lot of hours more hours than you do in your regular weekend kind of boat as you can see there they're pretty bent now that one there is the one that's the problem or the main problem you'll see that those are kind of in what happens is they they, they it's cold at the moment and this is sits in this position and if you're going to reuse an impeller each year, you can even take them out and they'll reform and you can put them in hot water as well but they'll reform and then you can reuse them but it's going to be very hard to show on here but get my finger out of the way I don't know if that shows up on the camera but there's like a a line down the bottom now it's not actually cracked cracked but it is starting to get a mark there so that's where they eventually wear out but as you can see I mean <laughs> I mean you could use that for another year if you wanted to um, I wouldn't advise it, but, you know, it shows that, I mean, that's a two-year-old done a lot of hours, and it's perfectly fine. I say perfectly fine, it's not perfectly fine, but it's not going to cause your engine a massive problem at the moment, and that's what the new one looks like, and they're all nice and straight, and really I should warm this up a bit before I put it in, because it is very cold at the moment, and obviously rubbers and plastics and things get really hard. Right, I'm just going to clean this and then uh, I'll get back to you. Right, it's been cleaned up just with the brush. Um, any sort of heavy corrosions taken away. Don't start, like, I wouldn't necessarily start trying to sand it on that because obviously as soon as you sand it, you're taking metal away. And then when it starts corroding again, you're just thinning your metal. So just brush away the worst so it's nice and clear. And now what you want to do is you want a half decent marine grease, a waterproof grease. Not all greases are necessarily the same. If you get one that's not waterproof, it'll mix with the water and go all foamy. So make sure you get a decent marine grease. This one is the one I use and it's always done fine, pretty much. I've never had a problem with it. Right, so we're going to put grease around here around where the seal is and around where the the little key thing for the impeller goes and I'm also going to put grease in here this is the gear box rod so just pack some grease in there as well don't stick tons of grease in and get it all in your water chamber you don't really want it in there I'm actually going to put a little bit on the body of the engine for now I, I said a body this bit here this isn't in the water or anything not not at the moment it will do eventually but because of the corrosion there it'll just stop your, the air getting it to the moment and provide a little bit of protection for a while trouble is this time of year here it's always damp where I am it's not so bad if you're in a dry country but here it's always damp so the moisture gets in everywhere even though you think your engine might be dry There'll be moisture in there just because of the cold metal. So, so I'm just packing it in around the gear rod. Because you can pack it in there, no arm. And I'm going to put a little bit here, then I'll put a bit more once I've put the plate and gasket back on. Or new gasket. So it won't do any harm, just like I say, make sure you don't put tons that's going to end up smearing into the water chamber. You don't really want it in there. If you can help it. Not blobs of it anyway. Right, I've got the gasket underneath. I've um, just put a little bit of grease on it as well, just so it all sits down. This will only go on one way because it's got the little keys there. So, make sure that's sitting right. And then, now you get some more grease. 
and you put it in where that key or the notch is on your drive shaft then it's always the tricky bit getting this back in especially when your nails are too short you can't keep hold of it right so that goes in there now I've just put a bit of grease on here but there's if the way to put these on, there's a little notch there, and that notch will go over that little pin that I just put in down there. So basically you want to try and remember roughly where it is. Slide that down. And... I need a torch because I can't see it. Try and line it up as best you can. That's there. Now it's on. As you can see, it's locked in position. Okay, just have to adjust it a little bit. It didn't want to quite seat down. It might have been the um, O-ring was just kept popping to the side a little bit, but it's on there now. You want to make sure you've got no gaps, and when it goes down, then it's actually down, which it is now. So, next thing is the bolts. Now, like I say with the bolts, I, what I do is I just take a bolt, Put a little bit of grease on it like that, pop them in. Right, make sure everything's seated right, it's good. And put the last one in. There we go. Put that back on. And we are ready to stick it back up. Of course, we put a bit of grease on the spline before we put it in. Right, now the fun part, reassembling. <clears throat> so in this part, you've got to make sure that this pipe in here, in that pipe there. Now, The other trick is to try and get this to get the rod into the spline as well and that's always a pain in the ass, I can tell you that much. Sometimes they go in really easy, sometimes they're a nightmare. So like I said, this, just make sure everything's straight lined up, you'll know if it goes in or not. What you want to avoid is if you go too much left or right you'll end up going down the side of it. So. This you've got to find a hole for the spline to go in. Let me just check the line. Yeah, that's lined up good. There. Yeah, that'll go in. If the spline goes in, which is the hardest part. There, it's in. Now. 
obviously start your engine up before you um, put it back on your boat just to make sure that it's the water's pumping and you've lined up with everything There we go, not too bad. Right, let's see if that's enough. Hopefully our water pipe has stayed on. Like I say, you'll start it up and check it anyway. And if it's not, you'll have to open it again and reset it. Probably gonna need more. like that Like I always say, never over tighten your bolts. If you're worried that they're not tight, quite tight enough, you can always, once you've got your engine back on and you use it a few days, a week, whatever, you can always go with a spanner and just recheck the nuts just to make sure nothing is coming loose, but it shouldn't do unless you've left them really loose. Sometimes when I will go over just to check when I'm say waiting for the tide to come in or something, I'll just get a spanner out and just go over things just to make sure everything's good. But that's all about good maintenance, looking after your engine, making sure that things are fine and nothing is going wrong before it goes wrong. So there you go. So there you go, that's how you change an impeller. Now, as I always say, with anything you do like this, it's pretty straightforward. There's not much to it. Like I say, you just gotta be cautious. Don't over tighten nuts. Don't try and make sure your spanners and things fit properly. So you're not gonna strip the head off or anything like that. And if you are not confident in doing your own engines, then always take it to the professionals to do. Um, and like I've said before, I always do my own engines, that kind of thing, because it teaches me about my engines, I know about my engines, and if I ever have a problem at sea, then I'm more likely to be able to sort any problem out at sea, if I need to. Um, obviously if I just took it to a mechanic and didn't do anything myself, and I don't know anything about engines, then I might be at sea and it might be something very simple I can fix out there or sort out out there, which will get me out of trouble. On top of that, it's my life on the line and knowing that I've checked the engine over, that I've done it, I've got nobody else to blame but myself if anything goes wrong. So there's that. It gives me kind of confidence in knowing that I have done the job. And maybe the first few times you may be a little bit not so confident, but when you've done it after a few years or quite a few years, you'll um, you know, get used to it. Plus other things as well as, I mean, engines change the way they sort of, I mean, basically they work the same way, but, the, you know, like electronic transmission, years ago it was points and all that, they were right pain in the ass. But now it's all the modern tech and it's, it's good to keep up with the technology and know how your engine works and all the rest of it. So there you go. And like I say, if you want to see the oil change, the oil filter change, plug change and that, I will leave a link in the description below um, so you can see that. And as always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe.